just who I am Won't you tell them I am redeemed Where there was hate Love now abides Where there was confusion Peace now reigns I'm walking with Jesus I'm a child of the King It's all because I am redeemed I am redeemed I've been bought with a price Jesus has changed my whole life If anybody asks you just who I am Won't you tell them I am redeemed Won't you tell them I Living Faith for Today is brought to you by Share the Vision Ministries and hosted by Rev. Joshua A. McClure, former pastor of the Pleasant Street Baptist Church, Westerly, Rhode Island. Rev. McClure is an international award-winning author, publisher of a learning library of 10 dynamic, life-changing books, as well as a writer of a two-year Bible-based church school curriculum, K-8. through He is a noted Bible teacher, counselor, and facilitator of Christian education workshops. And now, here is your host, Pastor Joshua A. McClure. Welcome to Living Faith for Today, and we're delighted that you're here to share in the living word of the living God. And today, I would like for us to consider the subject, Come See a Man. Come See a Man. As I was preparing my sermon for today, I could not help think of the many people in our society who are lost, confused, and bewildered, running around trying to find answers for the deep longing in their soul. And the more I thought of it, the more I realized that many who profess faith in Jesus Christ also seem confused and bewildered by the world in which we live and often project the image there is really not much one can do, giving a little hope or comfort to those in need. However, what many fail to realize is that we are not called to solve another person's problems, but to simply introduce them to the problem solver. Now allow me to explore this further by introducing you to a very familiar personage in our text, found in the Gospel of John, chapter 4, and verse 5. It is a story of a Samaritan woman who came to the well to draw water and, much to her surprise, found Jesus there. Now, surely, this was not the first time the woman had come to the well. But in meeting Jesus, she recognized her true need was not a physical thirst, but a spiritual emptiness. Now, when reading the text, one soon realizes this story is not essentially about the woman. It's really about Jesus. And yet, when one looks deeper, we find in reality, this story is really about every one of us. And what is notable is the writer's statement in verse 4, He, meaning Jesus, had to go through Samaria on the way. When we learn that Jesus was on a trip from Jerusalem to Galilee, we are made aware that John is telling us more than meets the eye. For geographically speaking, there were two other routes from Judea to Galilee. And Jesus usually took one or the other routes. But this time we're told he had to go through Samaria on the way. 
I believe the answer to the statement is Jesus knew there were people in that town who needed him, so he made it his business to pass that way. Thus, I believe God knows there are people listening today who need him, and he's stopping right where you are now, right now, to fill the void in your life that needs to be filled. And what I believe is that God knows us. He knows all about us. He knows our sin, and he knows we are tired of carrying buckets of water that never satisfy. And so, Jesus meeting at the well with a Samaritan woman was no chance meeting. John informs us, the meeting took place around noon when the woman came to the well to draw water, and Jesus asked her, Please give me a drink. Now, at first glance, this would seem a reasonable request and natural request due to the nature of the journey and the heat of the day. However, there were some extenuating circumstances to this meeting. Jews despised and hated Samaritans, who were a mixture of Jews and pagan people forced to live together when conquered by the Assyrians. Now, fully aware of this, Jesus specifically went through Samaria and stopped to have a drink and engage in conversation with this woman. To say the least, she was taken aback. She was puzzled and confused. However, she said to Jesus, you are a Jew. And I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jews have always kept their distance from us. But Jesus, feeling her pain, knowing her need, reached out and said, If you only knew the gift that God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. But sir, the woman said, you don't have a rope or a bucket, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again, but those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Now, these verses reveal several things which we dare not miss. The first thing is when the text says water in verses 10 through 15, it does not mean H2O. It means the living word, the gospel, the good news, the power of God unto salvation. So when the woman questioned whether Jesus had a rope or bucket, she failed to understand who he was. Her thought was on H2O. His thought was on life eternal. Now this is a classic mistake we often make. God comes offering a great gift, and we measure God's gift by our human standards, and thereby limit God and hinder the blessing. The woman, knowing the depth of the well and the lack of the container, addressed Jesus with doubt and cynicism, asking in verse 12, and besides, do you think you are greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? Many people today go to the natural springs of springs for water. And I recall when I was in Philadelphia, my in-law sent my wife and I to a spring in the park to fill bottles of water. The point is, we had to keep going back again and again and again. And much like people who seek riches or fame or honor or any kind of satisfaction, and yet no person has ever been fully satisfied with what society offers. Nothing on this earth has ever satisfied the longing in the human soul. Nothing on this earth can ever make up for the years of hurt and pain. And nothing on this earth 
can ever fill the emptiness one feels when they lose a loved one. Nothing on this earth can ever know the wells of loneliness so deep and so dark that you doubt that anything can ever reach the depths. Nothing on this earth can ever know the path of sin, of one stumbling blindly in ignorance. And yet, in the midst of it, there is a promise that emanates from the lips of our Lord. Those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Beloved, these are life-changing words. This is a bold claim Jesus made to be able to permanently satisfy a soul. And yet he made it constantly. And even today, right now, right at this moment, he makes it with the same assurance as ever to anyone who chooses to drink his water. Everyone who believes will have a new life, and this life will be a continuing spring, and it will never run dry. After hearing Jesus' words, the woman responds eagerly, Please, sir, give me this water, that I'll never be thirsty again. And I won't have to come here to get water. Her response to Jesus' offer suggests she thought it just might be possible to end her daily trudges with a glare of the hot sunshine and to a weary carrying of heavy water pots. But isn't this the sin of many of us today? We are eager for the physical cures and material benefits, but have little or no appetite or interest in the spiritual gifts God offers which are far more necessary and worthwhile. We can be into religion or into church and not be into Jesus. And as long as things are going pretty well, there's no need to seek even more. We think all we need is a better job, a bigger house, a nice car, or to be free from sickness and we'll have a full and ample life. All of this in deference to the need of our soul. Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, verses 15, life is not measured by how much you own. Jesus was well aware of the woman's need. He's not about to leave her in ignorance, so he brings her sharply up against the facts of her own life. Because something more is needed than a mere change in circumstance or environment, he says to the woman, go and get your husband. The woman starts to move away and then hesitates and slowly come back to confess, I don't have a husband. She answered honestly, so far as it went. But Jesus pressed her further and things were growing much too uncomfortable. So she tried cleverly to escape by starting a discussion about religion, hers and his. In verse 19 and 20, Sir, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship while we Samaritans claim it is Mount Gerizim, where our ancestors worship? She attempted to do what many people do today use their religion as a shield between them and God. People may be keen churchgoers, involved in many organizations, interested in its programs and activities, somewhat versed in doctrines and theology, but have no more than a theoretical knowledge that never brings them into a vital relationship with Jesus Christ. But Jesus is not to be deflected by side issues, answers the woman pointedly with an epic statement. Verse 23 and 24. But the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Water conviction 
What a conviction is this explanation. God does not desire external form, but a heart that understands the sin of the old nature and realizes that the unchanging holiness of God demands a sacrifice no less than the blood of Jesus. To such a heart, God makes himself known. To such a heart, God brings life. The woman was awed. She looked at Jesus and looked again, and a half-thought formed in her mind. This man, with his clear, sighted eyes that looked so deep and saw so far, was certainly a prophet. That was sure. But might might he not be something even more? She said slowly and hesitatingly, I know the Messiah is coming. The one who is called Christ, when he comes, he will explain everything to us. And then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. It was the clearest revelation that could be given to one who had experienced so much failure in life. And now more than half convinced, the woman left her water jar and ran to the town. Here on the hillside of Samaria, some 2,000 years ago, human nature was no different for a woman who had met Jesus, came up the path toward the people in town with wonderful words of witness. Come see a man who told me everything I did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? Could this be the savior of the world? Beloved, with certainty, this is the Savior. Jesus is the Savior of the world, and he is here today. He's waiting at the well of your need to give you living water. He's waiting at your well to quench your thirst where you'll never thirst again. I invite you right now to come see a man. Come see a man. Who once said, I must be about my father's business. Who one day left his home in glory because he saw your need and my need. And who came through 40 and two generations to meet you and I at your well. The man who knows all about our sin. A man who knows all about loneliness, fear, despair, and emptiness. A man who will meet you at the deepest wells of your life. A man who has power to open the floodgates of heaven and pour out blessing too much for you to receive. A man who came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. A man who dragged his heavy cross up Golgotha's hill, who made himself no reputation, humbled himself unto death, even death on the cross. A man who said while dying, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Then he suffered, bled and died, and bowed his head and said, It is finished. Come, see a man. Indeed, this is the Christ of God, the Savior of the world. I invite you today to come see a man who is the savior of the world. Be blessed today, beloved, be blessed. Amen and amen. We pray that you've been blessed by our radio ministry and will return again to hear words of faith and encouragement from the Word of God for Everyday Living. If you have questions or desire to contact Pastor McClure for help or comments, please send an email to sharethevision31 at gmail.com. You may order personally autographed books through the website at joshuamcclure.net or contact your local bookstore. For information on book signings, please call 401-741-2440. For those with Wishing to support our radio ministry, you may send a gift to Share the Vision Ministries, P.O. Box 304, Bradford, Rhode Island, 02808. Tell of his favor, tell of his love.
is love. I'll tell her his goodness to me. He purchased my redemption with his own precious blood. And from sin, he set me free. So I am redeemed. I've been bought with the price. Jesus has changed my whole life. If anybody. This is Judy Hall Gray for Share the Vision Ministries, reminding you to please join us at the same time next week for Living Faith for Today. If anyone asks you just who I am, tell them, I am redeemed.